and welcome to my channel. This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. And I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays and organize them in the playlists so that it's easy for you to navigate according to grade and topic. Um, yeah, so subscribe, turn on the notification button if you want to know when I post any new videos. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you um, a, a topic under maps and scales and we're going to specifically be looking at strip maps. I'm going to explain to you what a strip map is, how to work with a strip map, how to understand and interpret the strip map, and then also how to answer questions. So this was a requested video, so hopefully you find it helpful. Alright, maps and scales, strip maps. And like I always like to start, making sure we understand the concept. What is a strip map? So a strip map is a simplified map that shows the distances between cities on strips on the sides. Okay, so if I have a look at this, this is a strip map. So this is simplified. So you see the roads are in curve. They're sort of just made straight with the distances in between. And the distances on the left and on the right um, is what sort of essentially makes this a strip map. Um, as these values on the yellow sides basically tell you what the distances are uh, between cities. Okay, but I am going to just break down all the specific details of this map in the next slide, but it's essential for you to be able to identify what a strip map is first. Okay, so let's go and look at all the different aspects of a strip map. So essentially, this strip map is a route between Pretoria and Bloemfontein. So what that means is that I will have Pretoria right at the top and then I will have Bloemfontein right at the bottom, right? So these are the two big cities between which this strip map actually maps the distances. Okay, then the values on the side. So let's have a look here. So on the left-hand side, because Pretoria sits here, all these distances coming down here are telling us the distances from Pretoria. Okay, so that means that if I travel, if I'm at this point here in Johannesburg, right, I am 60 kilometers from Pretoria. This is 138 kilometers from Pretoria, 190 kilometers from Pretoria. So all of these are sort of adding from zero is as if you're traveling away from Pretoria towards Bloemfontein and right down here will be 455 kilometers, which is then the total di distance from Pretoria to Bloemfontein. So that's how you will read the left-hand side. These values are all the distance from Pretoria. Now let's move to the distances on the right. These are the distances now from Bloemfontein. So you will notice that the zero now starts at the bottom. And if I move to this 108, this is 108 kilometers from Bloemfontein. So as I go right up to the top, you will see again, I end up by 455 because ultimately this is again the distance between Bloemfontein and Pretoria. Okay, so on the left hand side, you've got distances from the top starting at zero, which is the distances from Pretoria. And on the right, you have the distances from Bloemfontein. Right, now we understand that. Let's look at other important aspects of this. These little um, hexagons, I think they are hexagons, <laughs> these little hexagons um, are representative of national roads. Okay, so these represent the national roads. And what is a national road? A national road is essentially a road that connects major cities. Okay, so you'll see this is N1, N3, N4, N12. And if you live in South Africa, if you live in Cape Town, if you live in Johannesburg, like these should all be familiar to you. All right, then we have the smaller circles. Now, these smaller circles represent the smaller towns and cities in between Pretoria and Bloemfontein. Okay, so here you'll have Pochestrum, you have Klerksdorp, you all have Kopis, Kroenstadt, etc. These are all small little towns and small little cities that you'll pass as you're going from Pretoria to Bloemfontein. Right, then these values... Right? So I've explained the, the numbers on the yellow strips, but you'll see that there are numbers on the actual map. These numbers are just the distances between cities here. So you'll see between Klerstorp and Volman Randstad, 
is 82 kilometers. So this is what the smaller numbers actually represent. It's actually just the distance between uh, sort of the main points of where that number actually lies. So this is 42 and it lies between these two points. So this is the distance between these two cities. Okay, so that is pretty much just the important things that you need to understand to be in order to be able to answer any questions. Okay, so let's actually try and answer some questions on this. All right, so again, I'm using the same map and we'll ask and answer various number of questions based on this map. Okay, so the first question says, what is the total distance in kilometers from Pretoria to Bloemfontein? So obviously you'll see in the previous slide I already showed that the distance, this is from zero right down to 45 on both sides. So, uh, sorry, not 45, 455 kilometers. So your answer for the first question will then be 455 kilometers. Right, so that's question number one. Question number two, is there only one route from Pretoria to Bloemfontein? Give a reason for your answer. So if I look at this map now, do you see, I can either go using this straight down, going on to the N1 from Pretoria to Bloemfontein, or I can take this turn off and then go along the N12 and then at Kimberley head on to the R48 to then get back to Bloemfontein. So is there one route? The answer is no. And what is the reason? You can either, you can travel along the N1, but you can also travel along the N12. Okay, so hopefully you understand that and that's fairly easy. Okay, next question. What is the distance between Kruenstadt and Fentersburg? So what I would like you to do is pause this video and see if you can find it and see if you can actually get the right answer. All right, this is my answer. So firstly, I'm going to find out where is Kruenstadt and Fentersburg. So if I have a look at the map, I see uh, here's Kruenstadt and here's Fentersburg. So this is the distance. All right, so the way you would find the distance that is on the main line parallel to these yellow lines is you are going to take the distances between the two points and you're going to actually subtract these values from each other. So you can either use the left strip or you can use the right strip. Okay, so you're going to always take the larger number and subtract the smaller number. So if I look, this is the two cities, right, and this is the two distances. So this is actually essentially, remember, the distance is from Bloemfontein. But if this is the distance from Bloemfontein and this is the distance from Bloemfontein, obviously these values, uh, the difference between these two values will essentially be the distance uh, between these two cities. Okay, so I would take 209 minus 159 and the distance between these two are 50 kilometers. If you had taken the values on the left, you would have taken the 296 minus the 246 and you would have also got 50 kilometers okay so whenever you're calculating the distance between two dots here that are parallel to uh, the totals on the right uh, the distances on the right then you would always just take the larger value and subtract the smaller value from that large value okay number four mark must travel from kimberley to bethlehem how far will he travel? Right, so again we have to give the distance between Kimberley and Bethlehem. <clears throat> again, pause this video and see if you can find it. My answer would be, first find Kimberley. So here's Kimberley, right, and we need to find Bethlehem, which is over there. So if you have a look, I now have to travel. The best way to travel would be along this line, along this line, and then along this line. Right, so along this line, they give you a distance of 177. Right, then I'm going to add the distance between Bloemfontein and this first line, which I know I can find here as 108. And then from here, I'm going to travel towards Bethlehem, which is 125 this way. So essentially, the calculation is 177 plus 108 plus 125 and the total distance will be 410 kilometers. Okay, I hope you got that answer. Last question. Number five. Jacob traveled from Vereniging to Kopis at an average speed of 120 kilometers per hour. How long did it take him in minutes to get to Kopis? 
Okay, so this is now where they are combining your ability to um, they are combining your ability to check if you um, understand strip maps, but also if you understand um, um, speed, distance, and time. All right, so let's have a look here. So they want to know how long it took. So they want us to calculate time. So time is always distance divided by speed. So in order for us to calculate time, we need to know what is the distance and we need to know what is the speed. So the first thing we're going to calculate is the distance. So if I look at the distance here, um, I'm going from Vereniging, which is over there, to Kopis, which is over there. Do you see that the distance here will be this little bit here, which is 15. Then the difference between 317 and 265, because it's this distance. And remember, you always take the highest minus the lowest value. And then this little value here, which is 10. So in order to find the distance, it would give me this 15 plus the 317 minus 265, which will give me this distance plus the 10 and my total distance is 77 kilometers so now i know the distance i now need to see okay and the speed is given so this is simple the speed is 120 kilometers so if i want to calculate time all i do is i take the distance divided by the speed so i've got distance of 77 kilometers which we've calculated from the map divided by 120 kilometers per hour which they gave us in the question and then What's important for you to note here is that the time unit will always be the time unit in the speed calculation. So this is 120 kilometers per hour. So when you're doing this calculation, your answer is going to be in hours. So this is 0 0.64 hours, right? But the question wants to know what is this in minutes? Now we know that in order to calculate, um, in order for us to do um convert hours to minutes we are going to multiply it by 60 so i multiplied by 60 and essentially it took jacob 38 minutes to travel from vereniging to copies and that's how you would answer questions and interpret strip maps all right that was that video hopefully you found it helpful and if you did i'd appreciate you giving it a thumbs up if you have any questions you can add it in the comment section below and yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!